his behalf. So I might not stay for the entire session, but the branch is represented uh, by Mrs. Sondi this morning. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you, DDG Zoom. <coughs> Colleagues, you, you'll pardon me. I do have a bit of a um, cold, so um, I don't sound uh, like I usually do, and apologies for that. Um, honorable members and colleagues, um, we have had a series of engagements as the portfolio committee with the Department um, of Higher Education and Training, as well as together with um, various stakeholders. I think our first state of readiness um, meeting was towards the end of last year, where we had uh, the department, um, Yusuf, Safetza, South, uh, Nasfus, um, trying to get a sense of how, sorry, actually, we would have had um, uh, Yusuf and um, Sakpo um, and the department and NASFAS in that meeting. And what we were trying to get a sense of in that meeting is our state of readiness as a sector for the academic year 2023. We then um, embarked on a two week long oversight um, uh, period where we visited Kwazul institutions of higher learning in KwaZulu Natal, uh, in Limpopo, and in Pumalanga. Um, I think out of the institutions that we visited and colleagues in in um, in the research unit as well as in the secretariat will assist me, but I think we visited Uni Zulu and there was a little bit of unrest there. We then visited, um, well, post our visit, there would have been a, a bit of unrest. Can I please ask to be made a co-host, Anele? Um, we visited Umfolozi, um, Tivet College, and I think out of, out of that, there was a protest on water. Uh, those are issues we, we were, um, alerted of as a committee when we went there that there are issues that are in the community that have a direct impact on um, the, the, in the our institutions. Um, but we also witnessed there that there were not, not so great stakeholder relations. Um, we then um, go to Limpopo where we visited Capricorn Tivet College. <clears throat> and at Capricorn Tibet College, I think we left there with an understanding that we should have a smooth start to the academic year. Of course, taking into, taking into consideration these overarching matters that are not institution specific, but speak to the sector at large, which by and large speak to NASFAS and speak to access um, in terms of our institutions having the capacity to take the amount of young people who want to um, go into uh, uh, post-school education and training. Um, and there at Capricorn, we've seen that at the Sishiko, Capricorn Tivet College, we've seen that at the Sishiko um, campus, there's been unrest. Um, and then I think I can leave Limpopo. Uh, then Bumalanga, uh, I think there was a memorandum of, uh, of demands that was submitted to the college at Etlanzeni. I have not seen um, uh, particular activities in at the University of Mpumalang. So colleagues, I'm just trying to say that from the institutions that we managed to visit as a committee and what we have seen, they are, and what we have seen in terms of student protests or um, student action, there has been some institutions where we visited where there has been uh, activities post our, our visit. There are other institutions, colleagues, where um, generally in the sector we've seen some unrest. We've seen unrest um, at NMU, we've seen unrest uh, at UWC. Um, we know there are challenges at CPUT, we've seen that there are challenges at Stellenbosch, we've seen that there are challenges at the University of Johannesburg. Uh, challenges at UK's at N, challenges at um, its University, uh, challenges at the University of Pretoria, challenges at Soplaiki University, 
<clears throat> and those are the ones that I can sort of think of from the top of my head. They might, there are many others that I'm leaving out. And that is why we felt it was important for us to engage with stakeholders, for them to give us a sense of what exactly is happening and us as a committee to be able to hold the department, um, uh, to hold uh, principals, to hold vice chancellors to account uh, and also, most importantly, to make recommendations that can help the sector to move forward. Um, we, we also received a, an update by the department this year after our oversight visits um, on uh, the state of readiness for this academic year, I think a week or two ago. Um, it would not have been last week, but it would have been the week before, so two weeks ago. So we have been trying our best not to interfere with the work of the department, the executive, um, with the, the work of uh, senior management of both colleges and, and, and universities to allow the sector to do its work, to implement. I mean, uh, uh, there's a huge sentiment that if we're always accounting, um, at what point do we actually go and implement? And I think we've afforded the sector space and time to go and do what they have to do. But um, we, we, we cannot, when we see that these challenges are ongoing, uh, allow ourselves to be in a situation where we don't have our finger uh, on the pulse of the issues in the sector. And so we want to also assist, maybe Honorable Litier would, uh, would um, use the term VAR approach, which I know that the Deputy Minister uh, uh, says if we want to if we want to apply that approach, then we must change legislation. But I think um, what Honourable Itzia often speaks to is covered by the sentiment of having an activist parliament. Um, so that is what Honourable Members brings us um, to this meeting this morning. We want to hear from students what. Um, exactly are the issues, not secondhand from media. We've tried to follow media, um, some of the statements that have been released by, 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 by various SRCs, as well as by SAUS and SADFETSA, um, but we want to hear from students. Tomorrow we'll be meeting with the department. We were supposed to honorable members get a briefing on um, work and progress in terms of the NSF, um, but we felt that it was important um, for us to get a sense of what is happening in the sector and be able to provide recommendations, most importantly, uh, to ensure that we are able to address the immediate challenges to access and uh, to, the, to the start of the academic year 2023. Um, with that being said, I will now, we have invited uh, Sadfeta and South to represent the two sectors, so to represent, Sadfeta representing um, our TVET colleges and South representing universities. I'd like to also take this opportunity to welcome the new leadership of, um, of Safetza. Um, uh, President Genius Shabalala, welcome to the sector as the, the president. Uh, you're not new to the sector as a student activist, but um, in terms of your role now as the president of, of Safetza, welcome to you and your collective. We are also hoping that you will be able to just um, highlight uh, before you start the, ex your executive um, of Safetza so that we're just familiar with, with some of your colleagues. Um, but welcome to yourselves and we as a committee wish you um, the absolute best in your term as, as the president together with your collective. We. Uh, unless, unless you have been previewed to our, um, our meetings and the work that we do as a committee, but you will learn that the committee is absolutely committed to um, advancing uh, technical vocational education and training. Um, and we've done a lot of work in trying to understand the sector and trying to understand what the, the demands are for the sector and how do we as a committee um, advocate for the required and, and requisite um, resources for the TVET, the TVET program to be able to fulfill its mandate. Um, we have over time, DDG Zungu, you know, advocated for an increased budget for TVETs. We have over time 
uh, advocated for greater infrastructure support for TVETs, advocated for um, financial management support for TVETs, advocated for um, more uh, lecturers, uh, the, the more lecturers, but also the capacitation of lecturers. Um, we have advocated for bringing about equity between the TVET program and the university program, um, particularly when we also speak to allowances. Um, I think one of the first things Honorable Itzi started saying in 2019 when we um, came into this committee was that there's no difference between the price of bread for a TVET student and a university student. That there's no difference in the price of accommodation for a TVET student and a university student, in the price of uh, transport and many other basic necessities that every student in the system would need. And so um, we, we, we really also want to see um, an advancement of the TVET curriculum for it to really be able to respond to the socioeconomic demands of, of our country. Um, so in terms of curricula, curriculum review, um, we have tried our best to, to really monitor at what pace the department um, is able to implement its own plans on, on curriculum review. And um, ensuring that when we, for example, have a skills summit and look into what skills um, are needed for the economy that are responsive to the economy, um, that are responsive to the social collisions of our society, um, at, at, at making sure that when those discussions happen, they do find expression in the planning of the department so that it's not just a talk um, show, you know, because I think it takes a lot of money to host all these conferences and summits that we have, but to ensure that those recommendations that come out of that find expression in the planning of the department. Um, we've done a lot of work as a committee in terms of the certification backlog. When we got here, Honorable Itzia will actually um, be able to give us the, the, the stats better, but um, I'm sure uh, 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 the, the research unit you know, of the committee as well. But when we got into the committee, um, the backlog was was quite massive in terms of certification, and we, as a committee, called for what we call the certification um, day zero of the certification backlog. And great strides have been made in that regard. But of course, we'll continue to advocate for um, an, a, a literal zero DDG Zoom. I know some of the cases that you have are, um, uh, I guess I don't know if you want to call them legacy cases, but they are cases where you can't find the, the student anymore, you just can't trace them, right? Um, but um, we really want to ensure that young people in our country are able to get their certificates so that they can go into the economy and be active participants um, and contribute to the livelihood of their families and their communities. So there's a lot of work, um, uh, President, uh, Shabalala that we are doing as a committee um, in, 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 in wanting to see the TVET College fulfill uh, what it, it is meant to. Um, I'm not going to say as much uh, to, to, to colleagues in South because uh, that, that, that leadership is, is, I was about to say old, but no, that leadership has been interacting with us for some time. And we know that they are due to go to conference soon, but um, yeah, so, so, so welcome uh, President Shabalala and your team, and we wish you the ultim, uh, optimal, utmost best uh, as, as the committee. At this point, colleagues, I will hand over to um, President Shabalala of Satfetsa uh, to then take us through the presentation of Satfetsa to the committee. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Salo, and my audible colleagues. You are president. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, my name is indeed uh, Genius Shabalala from Malang. Uh, I'm aware that you have load shedding where you are. Do yes. you think it would be possible at some point to open your camera so that colleagues and citizens who are watching on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter are able to just see who represents um, students in the TVET sector? Okay, let me just try make sure that the camera is forward. I'm using a desktop, so I don't know uh, how to do this because okay, I'm currently fine. using you a desktop. Can, you can continue and make your, your, your opening remarks then at a later stage because I see your 
cameras also not enabled at all here on the on the um, platform then we'll come back to you once you've sorted that out okay no problem yeah. uh no thank you thank you so much Salo. uh some of, some of the, the 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 things that we are actually facing uh it might be the NSFAS issue but moreover NSFAS must also uh, induct its people in terms of the guidelines, as more especially those who are working on campuses uh, to interpret what is written on the guidelines, because some of these uh, protests that are happening in our Tibet colleges are based on the interpretation and the misunderstanding of, of the NSFAS guidelines. Anyways, what I was uh, here to, to present, I think uh, it is the Tibet colleges that are affected together with, it, with their campuses and the provinces. And then we will find a, an amicable solution once we get a, a, a full reports from these colleges and regions are alike. So colleagues, I am accompanied by um, the Secretary General, Mr. Wangani Mkwali, who is from Follow the College and, and provincial chairpersons of Safeza from each a province, which I would take time if ever I can uh, name them one by one. But in any case, uh, colleagues, uh, in the Eastern Cape, we have a King Sabata Talinji Abotivet College. They were affect, the, the college is affected by the following campuses, um, Tata Campus, Libond, and Mkazi Campus. Uh, the lectures uh, are on strike, the main issue is to the corporate service related teaching and learning is not taking place. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much about that. Uh, yes, there was a meeting between the union uh, and the acting principal, which unfortunately deadlock. Another management Sorry, meeting is scheduled. Let's, let's get the, let, let me work on the presentation okay. first let's just make sure can i ask who, um who's sharing is it the committee is it you Anele? yes chair but i'm just trying to 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 make sure that the whole if i'm trying to put it on the on the what you call it uh, on the like i'm trying to make it on the reading mode it doesn't appear the whole um because okay. it's a pdf Let's escape again. Let's see. Let me just stop sharing. <clears throat> Apologies, colleagues. We're just trying to make sure that we can also see the, all see the presentation. Okay. So if you try and um, if you try and share share it, well, if you try and share again, then we go to um, the settings there. I can try and assist. Um, okay, sure. Um, can you see that? we can't see anything you're not sharing uh let me just try to share again has this document been circulated to members yeah i sent to members i got it this morning Right now. Okay. okay, I see it. Yeah, so the other columns, I can't, I can't see it all. Okay, can I ask something? Sorry. Um, do we have the, the Word version of this document? President, do we let have me, a, let, a Word version me. of this document? Because it's actually cut out from the saving. So 
it actually isn't a sharing challenge. It's a how the document was saved challenge. So mm. if President has a word version of the document, we can flight that. I'm still asking uh, no pala, sorry, chair. No worries. Colleagues, if we can just be a bit patient until we get the, the, the word version and then I think it should be more um, visible. Yes, I've, uh, sorry, Chair. I've just uh, asked Uno Pala to send the word version to okay. the Secretary of Parliament, yes. Okay, so let's, I think let's continue. Maybe maybe um, what you can do while they are sending that version, if you can just take us through a bit your, your, your NEC. So just um, when you are elected, uh, the composition of your, your NEC, okay. and then maybe okay. allow the provincial chairperson to introduce themselves if they are on the platform. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks, thanks, Chair. Uh, we were actually elected in on the 5th of February, 2023, and uh, Elang Initivet College that is situated in Pine Town. Um, yes, of course, I was elected as president. Then the deputy president is Hao Helo Choke, who's from Capricorn. You can also share um, uh, gender as you, as you introduce each. Okay. Thank you. Okay. As I am a, a male uh, a president, and then the deputy president is female, uh, who is uh, handicapped from uh, Capricorn Tivet College. Then there's Muwanga Numkwal, who's a male, uh, who's from um, Mvolo's Tivet College. And then we have the deputy secretary general, who's Mbulelo Kobo, who's from Urban, urban Tivet College. Then there's Tabelo Mfokeng, who's the treasurer general, who's a male, who's from Motewa Tivet College. Then there's student funding, who is uh, Kilebo Hill Olifant from Voselera Tivet College, who's a female. And then there's gender and disability officer, which is Ntabi, Ntabi Singh Mtagane, who is from uh, Kuruleni West Tivet College. And then there's sports, arts, and culture, who's Savano. Savano is from Savano is from uh, the College of Cape Town, who is a male, and then his policy development that is reliable Hile. Policy development uh, is from uh, Maluti Tivet College, and then there is wellness and campus safety, which is Masako Poisons, who is a female who is from uh, a rural Tivet college. So I would, I would like uh, also to have, uh, to ask more provincial chairperson to introduce themselves and the provinces where they come from, if you would allow me chair. Chairperson, are you still there? Sorry, I was just trying to navigate the different documents and stuff. Sorry about that. Yes, you may continue introducing the different, um, well, each chair can introduce themselves if they are on the platform. Yes, I was asking that uh, through you, Chair, that the chairpersons may introduce themselves and their provinces. Thank you, uh, President. Thank you, Chairperson of the session. My name is Sam Kero Mkwena from Gauteng, from Southwest Gauteng Tibet College. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, President. My name is Lerato Tosit from Pumalaga, Kersiband Tibet College. Morning, everyone. My name is Sibu Siso, Chairperson of the Western Cape from College of Cape Town. Thank you.
Okay, I th President, I think those are all the, are those all the chairpersons of provinces that we have in the meeting? Okay, I believe those are- Hello, so Good morning, good morning, everyone. My name is Mashiru David, chairperson of Limbobo from Waterbeck TV College. Okay, any other chairpersons on the platform? Okay, I believe we, that is, those are all the chairpersons that we have on, on the platform. Welcome to you all colleagues. Um, thank you, President. I think we can go back to you. Anele, have we been able to sort out the presentation? Yes, uh, yeah, I just changed into landscape. Okay, and then I think there should be a mode that allows us to um, view it without everything else. Um, if you just give me a second, I should. Uh, okay, I think if you press focus at the bottom, it should allow us just to see the presentation and nothing else. No, not that one. Try the one next to it. Not that one either. The lot, please try the last one. Okay, all right, no, it's fine. Just keep it on the normal one, we'll work with it. Thanks, Anel. Over to you, President. Thank you so much, Chair, for affording me the opportunity again. Um, I would uh, continue with my presentation. Uh, then I was in, in the Eastern Cape. I started with uh, the Eastern Cape. So most of their strikes are, are, are funding related. And then, uh, yes, of course, the matter is in progress in terms of uh, meeting the resolution. Can you go down a bit, uh, Nopala, so that I continue with the other province? So in Buffalo City, uh, yes, in Buffalo City, as I was saying in my opening remarks, that most of, uh, of uh, these uh, protests are not a student per se to say they are looking for uh, student allowances but it's on the basis that the interpretation of the guidelines, uh, it was the communication, there was a communication breakdown between the staff uh, and as far as officials and, and uh, the students of a populace. So they are still on, the, those tracks are still ongoing. Um, and I believe that uh, the intervention must come from as far as to go and induct uh, uh, the uh, the office of the of the financial aid on campuses so that they are able and they're in part to say when you speak to students or when you present these things to students they must be able to understand it in the simplest of English uh, even if you can interpret it from English to Zulu Kosa in the in the best way possible that uh, a student may understand can we go down a uh, colleague. And then and then in the Western Cape, then there's a West Coast uh, Tivet College. Yes, of course, there is a there's a process in Frendendal. And then then there's there's a Guazul Natal, then there's Teguin Tivet College, Asha Campus, then there's Mandeni Campus, which is part of Teguin Tivet College. Um then there's West Coast in Gauteng, Tivet College. Then there's a, a, a leadership. And then there's Maluti Tivet College, which is situated from the Free State. Um, then there's Twane North, which is in which is from Gauteng. Um, then in Limbobo, there's Capricorn in Sechiro Campus. Then the water bag is in Limbobo as well. And then these are the campuses that are listed. 
and then in Pomalanga, and then Harz Bande, we were we were disturbed by yesterday, actually, by uh, Nehau, which is still ongoing in other campuses, but uh, other campuses, there's, 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 there's peace for now. So we'll still get uh, to, to management as to say, what is it that they are looking for? So, so that we can uh, swiftly move forward with the business of the day, which is teaching and learning. So the delay of allowances, these are the uh, uh, current issues that are faced by students. It's the delay of allowances, the pending results, the delay of banking cuts, the delay on appeals, issues of, of backup generators for computer labs, the misinterpretations of guidelines. This is very sad, the one of misinterpretation of the guidelines that we can stop teaching and learning uh, based on the, in, the misinterpretation of the guidelines per se. I, I thank you, Chair. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, President. Um, I would like to check if there's anyone else who would like to share the SG um, and then maybe the chairpersons of the different provinces, if there's anything else that you'd like to add to the President's input. Uh, thanks, thanks, Chair. Uh, indeed, my name is Wongani Mkwani, uh, the Secretary General of Safeta. Most of the things that the, the President has said it in the in the presentation, but you know the reality is that, um, Chair, the students they are really frustrated. I won't speak much about the protest of Nahau, but when it comes to campuses, the students they are very frustrated a lot on the delay. Um, of allowances. You know, there are students that are getting money and then there are students which they are actually getting nothing and they don't know what's happening. The issue of statuses when it comes to NSFAS. Some students, the statuses are not changing and some students, the statuses are changing. But there are some students who really don't, are, not, are not getting anything on their statuses. The delays on appeals, it's really frustrating students. It's one point that is causing um, the strike in institutions. We have many campuses. I just said that there is a strike that started yesterday at Tegwini College, just because of appeals. The strike at Buffalo City, which the, the college management is, misinterpret is misinterpreting the guidelines uh, when it comes to the, to the issue of students, which did not pass last year, but this year they did pass. And they, they believe that those students should not be funded. Those are issues that should not cause that many, many problems when it comes to the sector, uh, but it's really an issue. I just wish that we can find a solution together with NSFAS and the department to address these small issues. Uh, thanks, thanks, Chaperson. Thank you very much, uh, SG. Can I check from the provincial chairpersons who are on the platform, if there are any inputs from them? Um, let's see. Okay, I don't see any hands from the provincial chairpersons. All right, then that brings us to the end of our inputs from uh, Safetza. Can I check if South is uh, settled? I know the president and the SG were traveling to Mtata, so I'm not sure if they are settled yet. Um, Mr. Asive, I think I saw you on the platform. Good morning, Chair, and good morning to the colleagues. Yes, I'm, I'm settled. Yes, settled. But I will be talking through the points, Chair. Chair. I won't be sharing anything on the on the on the from the screen okay we would ask though uh, like to, to, throughout the course of the day if you can kindly please uh, send us the presentation it just makes it much more easier for us to be able to follow up on these concerns with the department not not definitely so you know i've never come here and it. it's my first time because of the you know moving around time constraints sure okay yeah All right, you may, you may continue. 
colleagues. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to you and the entire portfolio committee team. I see there are also reps from the department. I also want to greet uh, our sister union colleagues, Comrade President uh, Chabalala and Comrade Wangani, and the delegation that accompanies them. Uh, I won't be very long, Chair. Uh, I won't be very long. I'll just give you an update on a very high level so that we can have an idea of what is happening in the investor sector. Uh, maybe just to start, uh, Chair, uh, with the key main issues that we have identified as South uh, to be the uh, major problems uh, in the sector. Number one is the progression rule by NASFAS. If you would recall, uh, last year, uh, we had a back and forth discussion around the issue of the progression rule. As a result, we reached a point to say that let's remain on 50%. But something then happened when they were sharing the guidelines, there was a table that was misleading the institution, which was giving uh, uh, the numbers of the modules that one must pass, which were not inconsistent with what we've agreed. So now we are finding ourselves in that particular predicament now uh, to a point where uh, about 60,000 students are affected in this registration period. And we've raised right. this. Can you repeat that uh, figure, please? How many NASFAS students are affected? And as I'm telling with you, I was sitting with NASFAS yesterday and we've agreed on this matter. And the only thing that they are waiting for is the uh, concurrence from the minister, which is which we are waiting for. It, it, might, it might be received between today or tomorrow, because as we've agreed the study, they said in less than in, in two days' time, that concurrence should come. Uh, so that's where we are on the concurrence, uh, on, the, on the progression rule, uh, Chair. Uh, on the issue of the appeals, Chair, uh, from our meetings, uh, the CEO of NESFAS has indicated to us that the team has started to work on the appeals. Well, as you might be aware that there is an independent tribunal that was also established as the guidelines, which was pushed by South to say that we must have an independent uh, tribunal. So that tribunal will only work on the rejected appeals, meaning and, and students who were probably appealing for the second time, or students who might have been affected because uh, of uh, you know major cases such as you know different issues which are not being listed uh, in, in the guidelines and all and, and, and so on and so forth, but. For the first time entering students, their appeals are being processed. And for those who are straightforward, their appeals are being processed. But the major ones will be dealing with, with the independent tribunal, which will be sitting this coming Friday and Saturday. So um, in terms of the appeals, that's, that, that is where we are, uh, 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 Chair. Uh, in, the, in, in that appeals uh, uh, tribunal, uh, we sit as South and Safeta, our union seats. There is a rep from USAF, there is a rep from Tihet. And then there is, it is chaired by the independent chair uh, uh, outside of Masas. Also, on the issue of allowances, chair, I'm sure you would recall when we met at Masas, when you were also doing your own uh, 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 oversight. Uh, the reason we were there, it was around this issue of allowances and, 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 and mainly also the profession. Uh, we had agreed on the issue of allowances, and even the minister announced in the joint statement that we attended. Uh, the 150 increase for all the living allowances. Uh, but now, when we said NASFAS, but the minister pronounced this matter publicly, even on, 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 on the media press. But now the NASFAS says, yes, we agree, the increase is there, but now we must be given something written by the minister, of which is going to be part of that progression rule concurrence. Uh, two things have been submitted. Uh, for the concurrence, because according to NASA, they say they can't just pay uh, based on what is pronounced by the mouth without being turned down, because on their side is going to be what is called uh, uh, an irregular expenditure. So, as far as we're concerned, in terms of the increase, that's where we are. Uh, and one of the famous topics uh, in this particular uh, 
registration period is the cap. I think on this one, Chair, I think we are not moved by anything on this one. We support the cap. Uh, by the way, the cap was proposed by us to say that it can't be correct that students uh, are being exploited, uh, not only by accommodation providers, but also exploited by their own institutions. And we're not saying anything. So the issue of the cap, Chair, we support the issue of the 45,000. I am aware that in VETS, the strike is around this issue of 45,000. I'm very aware that the university, the, the, the university supports us. And the only issue that there are those who are committed for uh, academic accommodation providers to ensure that this 45,000 is protected by when the university we have engaged them, the university is supporting this camp. They have no issue with this camp. Now, maybe to share, you want to know about the way. Uh, the only institutions now which are on strike, as you know, it's that and UK's at end. It's regrettable to communicate this platform chair that it came to our attention in the evening yesterday that the president of the SRC of Feds has been suspended uh, because of the ongoing protest. I have, I have deployed uh, the team from South led by the deputy president uh, 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 to go and engage the Feds in SRC together with the management, but also from South will be writing formally to the VC. Uh, we'll copy you, Chair, and we'll copy the teaching because uh, this phenomena of just suspending student leaders when they raise their own general concerns, it's a problem. And we've been raising this. And I have raised it a number of times within the portfolio committee with the head in all the events because if you look at the demands that have been raised by our colleagues at VETS, those are the issues which are institutional in particular. And if the management has an appetite of resolving them, should be sitting down and engage a, a number of ways in terms of how they go about ensuring that there is no students being affected. For instance, the issue of the 150 students who are old more than 150, they're not allowed to register. The issue of the 10,000 uh, upfront payment for residences. I mean, uh, uh, Chair, I'm, I'm saying these are the genuine issues which the SRC has been raising. Uh, uh, and it's, it's something that we, 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 we must be able to support them so that they are not being victimized because of the genuine student struggle that they are raising within their institutions. We've also been aware that in UK, that and two student leaders were, are still in custody, they are arrested uh, 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 from UK, and uh, uh, this coming Thursday and Friday, uh, we will be in case at end, uh, uh, all the South uh, NEC members. Uh, there will be a delegation that will be visiting the case at end uh, to, to, you know, to engage the management, particularly on these matters, because it can't be that we, we allow these things to happen as normal, as if there's nothing wrong uh, that is happening. You might know that some institutions that were on strike, but now they've gone back to class, it's UWC, uh, CPUT, it's UOPS, uh, and and UJ, the UJ recently, I think, recently stopped. I think it was on Friday. Uh, well, of course, uh, I think uh, uh, what they've raised with us is that at least there were some uh, 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 agreements that they've reached with their respective managements uh, in terms of the issues that they were raising. Uh, so I'm told also that uh, the TUT has also started now to go to the streets. So. But before we go to Deben, I might also have to shift the team that I've deployed to VES to also go and see and find out uh, what are the major issues that are affecting the TUT students so that we can be able that we ensure that all our students are in a class and all our students uh, are in a conducive environment. What we have agreed upon, Chair, on this issue of accommodation, we have said where there are major challenges, where institutions believe that the 45,000 is not working. So I, I can tell you for free, there are many people who are prepared to work on this camp. But now, because institutions are colluding with accommodation providers, and now they see this as a regressive approach in terms of you know, diminishing whatever that they were getting from these providers and all that. So Nesfas has agreed to say, Look, they have sent their own team to the ground and already it has determined the number of beds which are available in these different areas. So we've said 
where there is a crisis like that, NASFAS must intervene directly with emergents where their own particularly uh, 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 funded students are being affected. They must be able to provide solutions to their students. Likely, they have a portal, so meaning that when we have, when we have identified those beds, those people must just register, and then the NASFAS funded students are being enrolled and they are taken through. Chair, I will pause there for now, uh, 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 but if my colleagues, I have the DP on, 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 the, on the meeting, I have the TG, I have the spokesperson, and also I have the national organizer. If they want to add anything, uh, I, would, I would then uh, uh, give to them uh, 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 to make those additions. I thank you very much. Thank you, Nopala. Um, can I check if there are other colleagues would like to add? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. All right, there was a request that SRC presidents, uh, that the invite be extended to SRC presidents. Can I check from both structures if that was done? That, that was done, Chair. But uh, understanding, you know, SRC is the short notice. They don't look into their emails, even that WhatsApp group. Sometimes, you know, it takes a lot of energy for to to get them to recognize the things that you post there. Okay. All right. Thank you, Nopala. Um, honorable members and colleagues, this is then the input that we've received from from Sadfetsa and South. Um, I'm very concerned about the, 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 can I please note from members, uh, pants of members who'd like to engage. I'm, I'm very concerned by the um, um, suspension of the SRC president adverts, the arrest of the UKZN uh, students and the fact that it has been a reality for so long. Um, and I, 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 it's, I mean, uh, you know, we've scheduled the department to, to respond by and large tomorrow, but I would want to know if the department was aware of this. Um, and I'm wondering, President and, and, and SG of uh, South, if there are other students who have been suspended. I mean, I know at WITS there are more students who have been, um, uh, I guess, who have received a notice or have been suspended, but I know that there's more than the figure that we have here of the, of the president, because I think this challenge started a couple of days ago when the students started protesting. And at UKZN, the, if we could have the specific number of students that have been arrested, and I think it would be important for the department to uh, bring us into confidence on what has then happened to those students, how far are they, how many are they. I think we just need a proper report on those students that have been arrested at UKZN. But also, I think we need to do greater work on understanding. I mean, UWC was protesting, <clears throat> UP. If I'm not mistaken, UP were also being threatened, UP students were also being threatened with suspension. So I think we just need to do a proper audit of how many students um, or student leaders may be affected by um, some sort of intimidation by, by, by management. Um, I'm not gonna go much into all the other matters for now. I think I'll allow colleagues to, to go first and then I'll come in in the end. Um, Honorable Mananiso, Honorable Mohale, Honorable Zondo. Honorable Mananiso, Honorable Litie. Honorable Mananiso. Okay, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, kindly allow me not to switch on my video. And let me start by actually acknowledging the fact that this is an agent meeting. And indeed, as you alluded on your remarks, we cannot. Uh, close our eyes when we see that the country is burning, yet we try to intervene so that we avoid whatever that we are seeing happening in our spaces of, of peace and sector. Uh, Chair, 
I, I, I think let us appreciate uh, the presentations, both from Safeta and Yusuf, and as well acknowledge the fact that they've, they, they have indicated the work that they have done as leadership. However, one would want to say that indeed there's a need of ensuring that uh, perhaps the civil education in terms of protesting, because I, some of us have noted what it's been said on media by uh, Yusuf in terms of ensuring that uh, disruptions, they don't actually become a, pro a pr process of criminalities where people just vandalize and do as they wish. And I think there's a need of civil education in terms of actually ad advocating for peaceful protest that at the end won't co cost damage to uh, things that we 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 we, we are uh, witnessing. Uh, Chair, my question is with regards to the to 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 Saud and Safeta. I just because of on their presentation, what I like, they have confirmed that they were part of stakeholder engagement consultations organized by Nesfas on the twenty twenty three Bazari guidelines. How many engagement were held with Nesfas? on the 2023 Bazaar guidelines and did your members attend all these particular engagement? Because one is noting that Safeta, it's indicated that most of the beneficiaries or student, they are not uh, inclined in terms of uh, what uh, it, uh, it is stipulated on those particular guidelines. And again, I'm happy that uh, we, we, we they are noting that uh, Sawusi actually has indicated that um, they are supporting the issue of the 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 cap for for forty five thousand and of which is one of the things that we are actually happy about on the fact that they really understand that particular space that for the the economy status that we are at we cannot promote a uh, corruption and issues that that undermine our, 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 our gains of democracy. So I'm very happy about, uh, about that issue of, of, of uh, them uh, acknowledging and appreciating that the 45,000 cap accommodation fee, uh, they, are, they are actually supporting. And uh, I'm happy that as well, they have indicated what it's been said by us as the portfolio committee in terms of uh, collusion of the private uh, accommodation providers and student and as well uh, and institutions. So it is there's a need that the department move at speed in terms of exposing those actually who, are, who want to uh, exploit the the, the 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 student in the name of you know affordable accommodation fees and and, and so on. But uh, chair, one would want to really just as the department in terms of their in, uh, uh, intervention uh, from today up until up until we get this thing of uh, making sure that uh, students are in class uh, do can they give us specific uh, uh, time frames uh, tomorrow in terms of how far are they with engagement and give us specific deadline in terms of when exactly will they, this uh, disruption stops in all our, our spaces? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Mananiso. Uh, Honorable Mukhal. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, greetings uh, to the student leadership that is here, uh, to our colleagues. Chairperson, I know I um, joined the portfolio committee just recently. However, I was appraised that the committee started the year by visiting all these uh, institutions of higher learning to check on their state of readiness and to see if they are uh, the academic year is going to proceed without any challenges. Sorry, Chair. Exigency. Sorry, Chair. Exigency. Uh, sorry, Honorable Mukhale. Apologies, Honorable Mukhale. Yes, President. 
Yes, uh, we are being escorted here by the campus. And then, so we, we will be offline. So because the how is striking, then they've just arrived and then there's a there's a set of strike outside. Okay, is there someone you can hand over to president? That will be the secretary general, Mr. Mkwal. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you very much, president. Apologies, um, Honorable Mukhali, you may continue. All right, no, no, it's fine. No, hopefully they are safe there. Um, my point, uh, Chairperson, is that beginning of the year, you went on a visit to all these institutions of higher learning to check on their state of readiness for the 2023 academic year. And some of the reports, I, I believe, was uh, that no, everything is fine and all of that. But here we are now, we are sitting with the student leadership and they are raising all these challenges and we have seen them uh, over the past couple of weeks with the strikes and all of that. So I, I, I don't know really Chair, if uh, maybe we are, or you were not given a true reflection of uh, what is happening in, that, uh, in those uh, colleges and universities. Uh, you know, what, what, what did they lie to us in terms of uh, their state of readiness where they could not foresee uh, some of the issues that are being raised now, you know. Uh, but uh, I want to say that uh, we fully support the issues that are being raised by the student leadership on the issue of the uh, LSFAS uh, cap that should be imposed to ensure that the state is not being uh, sucked or milked dry by these uh, um, corrupt elements. So we are in full support of that. Uh, but again, uh, Chair, um, well, it's unfortunate that uh, the president of uh, Safeta just uh, uh, went off, but I wanted to pose a question to him because I had him uh, speak about uh, the rules that were being used or being interpreted in a particular way, but he didn't like really go into details as to what exactly is the issue there, uh, what are the what are those rules, and so I would have loved to get a much more clearer understanding of what is happening. Uh, with regards to that. But uh, Chairperson, I think uh, really uh, we, we can't afford to have these issues over and over again. Every year the academic year starts and we know that students are going to be on a strike over issues of NSFAS and, 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 and so on. So I think that uh, these things need to be addressed uh, permanently and ensure that they don't reoccur. We, we can't have this kind of thing, sir, uh, Chairperson. And also, I think we must condemn the, the leadership of these universities, the vice chancellors and so on, for the heavy handedness approach in the way in which they deal with uh, student protests in the, our campuses. I don't think the issue of uh, bringing police and militarizing uh, the, 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 the campuses is in any way going to assist us to resolve uh, some of these issues. In, if it, in any case, what it does is that it inflames the situation even more. So we, 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 really, we really need to get answers, uh, uh, Jefferson, uh, from these vice chancellors. If there must be someone, let them be someone, particularly that one of UKZL, who has uh, uh, shut off any means of engagement uh, for the student leadership uh, to engage with him, just resorts to violence and, and threats and so on. So uh, there must be someone, there must be brought here, they must give answers, uh, Jefferson. We must question them. We must find out exactly 
why they do the things that they are doing and they are telling our universities into uh, war zones. So that is my input for now, uh, Chairperson. I don't know if you will open later on, but for now, that is my input. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mukhale. Uh, Honorable Zondo. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, greetings to you, the Chairperson, and the committee members, colleagues. And uh, uh, the delegation from Sousa. Uh, led by the secretary. I'm sorry, Chair, <clears throat> for my voice. I, I had a long flu for the past two weeks, so yeah, uh, my voice is not uh, at its position. But uh, I've heard the presentation from the president and the secretary, but Chair, I think it's high time that we take serious uh, this thing of the management threatening students whenever they raise concerns student concerns, in, in fact, because uh, as student leaders, uh, they, they don't raise their concerns, they raise student concerns. So, and, and sometimes uh, they got into a firing, firing line. But I remember the chair, when we were doing the oversight, I've said this uh, not once, not twice, uh, that management is abusing its power uh, by suppressing uh, student leaders in order to raise views and concerns from the students. And uh, there are many other universities that are not counted in today's pre presentation. I've said it, and uh, I've, I've, I've commented about this uh, where we are in Mangosuchi University of Te Technology, that there are students that are suspended and other not suspended are just uh, been dismissed from the from the school uh, because of the same thing that is the strike that happened uh, during the year. So, but I, I think we need to have a, a, a machinery that we work with student formations in terms of trying to help them uh, whenever they raise concerns uh, and trying to work with them so that uh, the management will, will take serious of the student concern, not to suppress them, not to fire them. Uh, and this thing is happening even in Ungoya. Uh, that's why I was so surprised here when, when we were at the University of Zuland, when, when we see SRC uh, seeing on the same handbook with the management, but only to find that it's because they were cautioned. If you deviate, you'll dance. So, but does that help the students? No, it does not help. Does it save the papers? No, it does not save the papers. So then we need to look at closer to this. And Chair, I, I just want to urge the committee uh, and colleagues that I think in order to solve this, we need to put politics aside and face directly with the challenges that are faced with uh, student. I am happy that uh, uh, most of us in this committee uh, were once former leaders of student movement in, in universities or institutions. So we know what is happening. We've been there, we've led strikes, and we know what is led, what leads to, 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 in fact, to take that route to strike. So I think we have to, we have to be fair and not to protect our comrades who are leading institutions uh, when they are doing wrongs uh, in the name of the institutions. Because we need to take a stand, a, a firm stand in fighting this. One example, one institution will, will, will make sure that uh, the management that does this dance, um, then all the other institutions will, will, will try to, to sort their, their issues out and make sure that they, they they make sure that the students uh, are hurt when they are crying. <clears throat> Lastly, uh, I, I think we have to be fair, Chair, on the, on the cap of 45,000. In, in some sense, 45,000 is not enough, not because students, they want to eat money. It's another story about how they drink and how they spend the money that they are given. But in the issue of accommodation, I think on that one alone, we need to be fair. 
There are places whereby, like in, in vets, some in some residents, you need 80,000 per year. And then you have 45,000 from NS funds. Then what about this gap? Who, where do they get this money to bridge this gap? Um, in other places are 60,000. Whereas NS funds give 45,000. Then we need to be fair about this. Not to politicize, to politicize it, but to be fair and try to attack a, a challenge fair, fair, fair and head on. When we need to engage the, the residents owners, then we need to do that and try to tell them to lower a little bit, but not to just say uh, 45,000 is fine. Whereas it's not fine when you go out there and you find that the challenges there are really, we, they need our attention and our intervention in terms of to try and, and mediate the situation and, and see how to resolve it without being taken side of like politically. I think for now, Chair, um, I will stop there. Uh, my comment then. Thank you, Honorable Zondo. Um, before I note Honorable Litsi, I want to just you know, we had a committee meeting, Honorable Mohale. Uh, when was that meeting where we raised the issue of the cap? I think it was not last week, the week before when we met with the department and NASFAS. And I think members across the board, by and large, maybe Honorable Marquesi and King shared a slightly differing view. Maybe Honorable Marquesi, I think, shared a slightly differing view. Um, but I think there was an agreement that, or consensus by and large, that we cannot normalize the, the rates at which um, service, private accommodation service providers in particular, set on student accommodation. Um, in fact, we even questioned universities themselves that um, do they have an appreciation of the fact that education is a social good? And if education is a social good, then any other resource that seeks to support education, which is a social good, also becomes a social good. So accommodation is a social good, textbooks are a social good, you can even say transportation itself is a social good. So any other resource that will ultimately support education, which is a social good, is in itself a social good. So what then um, uh, is, the, is the basis in, at, on which um, universities in particular um, find it okay to, like you said, I think you said, I think you put a price of 70,000 Rand to, 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 to charge a, a, a space that is probably smaller than, I don't know what, Honorable Litia, you're coming up next, you, you will assist in terms of, you know, um, the diameters, the measurements, you know, but ultimately it's a space honorable Zondo that is not even as big as your room at Acacia Park. It's smaller than your room at Acacia Park. Two kids, two students are living in that room. Uh, they are all sharing bathrooms. They're all sharing kitchens, kitchens which have two plate stoves, which we would have seen during oversight. And then someone wants to go and charge 70,000 rand for students to, to, to live in that space. And I think we agreed by and large that that is problematic. I think we agreed by and large members from across parties that um, even when we look at private accommodation, the rate at which an individual will be renting out an apartment that has a bathroom, that has a, 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 a kitchen, and, and, and maybe it's this person alone, in fact, maybe it's two people at max, will still be at a rate much lower than this. Um, and what we then said to to NASFAS is that you need to assist us with the research that informed the figure of 45,000 Rand so that we can explain this. And what we also resolved on was that NASFAS must go to the Competition Commission and, and, and ensure that we're able to regulate what we are concerned about as, as price fixing. So that was just the general conversation that took place about two weeks ago in this very same portfolio committee. And I think we must really caution ourselves from 
any nuances that seek to say that there is a particular political posturing of the committee, um, that the committee is not uh, uh, um, objective in its work, that the committee um, is uh, puts politics first. I think one of the greatest <laughs> um, characteristics of this very portfolio committee is the ability for us to um, across political affiliations, always put what is necessary forward, what is important forward, put the interests of students, put the interests of this country forward. So I, I think I want to protect members from all political parties, um, from the insinuation by Honorable Zondo that there is, they is, there are certain politics that are, putting, are put forth. I think as the chairperson, I often listen to what members say and I mean, I know, for example, Honorable Marquesi, um, in those discussions around the cap, there was a huge sentiment of, let us understand, though, also, why uh, service providers charge the amounts that they charge, uh, you know, so that is a position that the DA would take. And I think it, 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 it is well captured in the minutes of this committee. And it is something that I'm sure the department and NASFAS will go and consider. But an insinuation on nobility that um, we put politics, I don't know what you're saying, Honorable Zondo, but I, I really want to protect all members of this committee across political affiliations from your insinuations. Honorable Litsie. Good morning, um, Chairperson. Good morning, Honorable Members. Good morning to the student leaders from South and South Delta, uh, our staff members. And if uh, there are any SRC leaders who are here also, um, extend my greetings to them. Um, <clears throat> Chair, I've been struggling a little bit with the um, connectivity. I'd also like not to open my, my video. Like on Rabul Zondo, I also have a little bit of a uh, flu. So if at any point um, I cough, uh, please note that it's because uh, of that flu. <coughs> like now. Um, and Chair, maybe let me start where you, where you ended. Um, I find it problematic that um, Honorable Zondo suggest that we must um, have an open-ended budget for student accommodation. Um, for NSF students. If providers suggest that their student accommodation is worth 90,000 rand per year. So 9,000 rand per month. We must not question how they got to that figure. At, uh, at UCT, there's a rest that costs 9,000 rand per month in Cape Town. Also in Cape Town, between CPUT and UWC, there's an accommodation that costs 2,800 rands per month in the same seat, all in Cape Town, in the city of Cape Town. Some of them cost 4,500 per month. And the suggestion that um, we must not question that, I think it, uh, it confuses me. And I think the, the, the assumption is that we're only dealing with NSF students who are being paid by government and people must keep quiet. We are forgetting that we have self-funded students who are part of the missing million, who uh, also do not have uh, this money. So this, sector not being regulated is problematic in many ways. You spoke about uh, social 
responsibility associated with that, which I fully agree with. Um, um, so we have, a, we have a problem here, um, Honorable Zondo, of which I believe 100% that there is collu collusion here by these private providers to milk, in their view, the state, uh, and no one must ask questions, which can be right. When we had that meeting with the NS First Chair, we expressed ourselves in the department. We expressed ourselves. We actually welcomed the suggestion from NS First that uh, they must approach with immediate effect the competition commission. Because some of this uh, uh, student accommodation in, in my view, are extremely uh, unnecessarily expensive for anybody to afford. We made an example there. We said, let's go to Bram, Bram Fontaine. They are residential units, flats, two bedroom flats where uh, uh, those who are working somewhere there in Bram or whatever, they are renting those two bedrooms. They will be charged 8,000 or 9,000. So two bedroom, uh, two, uh, two, one bathroom, one shower, two, two pilots, you know, a living room and a kitchen. And not far from that, a student accommodation far small for two kids sharing. You want to charge them 6,000 rand each. That room where they're sharing is even smaller than one bedroom of these two bedroom apartment. And you must keep quiet. It's, it's, it must be business as, as usual. It cannot be. We, we agreed with the cap. Uh, chair of NSFAS. Uh, this sector can, you know, we can continue having a sector like this of student accommodation that is not regulated. Because this is what happens. You'll have a problem. There is proper colluding uh, against the students, not necessarily government or NSFAS, but against the students. And that's why we said uh, we want uh, NSFAS to approach the competition commission with immediate effect, um, and there must be sp speedy resolve on this matter. So I don't agree that uh, uh, if uh, student accommodation charges eighty thousand in Bram, uh, we are we are literally saying the student must find that money somewhere. That's not what we are saying. That's not what we're saying. We're saying the competition commission must come in here and help the students. Maybe let me leave that part, chain and go to what I would have wanted to speak to um, when I raised my hand. Um, I think um, welcome the presentations from uh, the student leaders. Um, re-emphasize, Chair, what we've always said in this um, portfolio committee that student prote protest we will support. If students feel that their issues are not taken to heart or seriously by institutions, they are well within their rights to protest. We've also said, Chair, that we encourage uh, our students that when they protest, they must protest peacefully. And they will have uh, our 200% support when uh, that happens. We've also said they must not resort 
uh, to playing dirty like this, university management sometimes, uh, um, what they do. So they must always have peace, peaceful protests. They must not resort to, to violent protests because when that happens, uh, their genuine issue uh, becomes compromised uh, by the violence of this protest. Uh, so I want to repeat it, Chair, that when I sit at here, I can't support any violent protest anywhere. Just like I can't support uh, the militarization of our institutions by universities, this hotline approach taken by the university management, um, we must also say that a violent protest will not uh, support. Uh, because when you start doing that, you are even inviting some criminal elements who will come in and join your protests. Uh, and some of them are not supporting you, but some of them may have been um, been um, recruited and paid for by some of uh, these people who are colluding, um, um, you know, in uh, uh, projects uh, there at universities that they know they are on the panel for 2023. Uh, if uh, a library is mysteriously banned, it's them who's going to to be called in. So we don't we don't want um, a situation where the genuine efforts or issues of students are hijacked by those things. Um, we are extremely worried, or I'm extremely worried, seated here, chair, that uh, when a university employee who's in management is accused of something. The university do not act swiftly and quickly in suspending them. Some in our institutions are accused of um, very bad things. Some of them sexual harassment, some of them uh, working with the student accommodation providers uh, for monies here and there. They are not, you know, the university don't act uh, fast in suspending them. But when it's students uh, who are protesting, some of them peaceful, the university has not even take three days. Ah. Uh, with immediate effect, there's a letter, you are suspended, uh, surrender all university property, what, 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 what. And I think we must have a, a serious discussion with the department and USA on this matter at Jefferson, that we can't have this kind of attitude by these universities towards the biggest and the largest uh, stakeholders at these institutions, who are the students. But when it's them, they are soft on each other. It was these things that have been happening in a lot of, in a number of our institutions. And I think it's high time that uh, we have a specific uh, discussions with these people uh, and we'll bring them uh, examples that in this institution, this person was accused of this, you did nothing. This student at the same institution was accused of this thing, you suspended them. So there seems to be bias towards how students are treated at uh, these institutions. And I think we must have um, we must have that um, that into. the the strike of Nehau at uh, our institutions chair. When we're doing oversight, I think in in, in KwaZulu Natal, where we had an opportunity where the unions were there, we we asked them. You know, um, and this is this thing has been happening for quite some time. The wage. Uh, negotiations uh, uh, generally happens around April, May at these institutions with the, the unions. Uh, these people 
or the unions don't strike when they don't agree at that time. They wait for registration period. And we ask them there that can they please uh, uh, not disrupt uh, when they don't agree with the universities or institutions, uh, the registration period, because it's one of the most important calendar dates of our institutions. We, we try to ask them, Chairperson. Uh, it, it was as if we knew that this was going to happen. And I think maybe at some point, uh, we, we, we must also have a discussion with them. I don't know how you know, we'll phrase it with them because we also don't want to say to them that uh, their issues are not genuine. Because some of their issues may be genuine, you know, as an institution that uh, uh, presented us, I think it's VUT that presented us with a memorandum uh, from the, how they, that they had staff members who had been part-time for 10 years, you know. So their issues uh, are genuine. But we must find a way uh, to protect the sector um, by having some concessions with uh, all stakeholders that, uh, you know, even if things are too bad, we can't go out of, you know, let, let's move within this um, uh, frame, you know, and let's not go out of it because it will affect teaching and learning. And if it does, it, it affects uh, the results, uh, the throughput rate and all of those things. So so, so I think, Chair, I want to, to suggest that, well, I don't have a specific uh, uh, questions. I think Honorable uh, Mananiso asked uh, the questions that I wanted to ask both the uh, South and Safeta so that um, on the CAP, uh, how many engagement they had with uh, with uh, with NSFAS, uh, was there an opportunity uh, for uh, for USAF, for NSFAS, South Safeta, the department? Uh, and probably um, student accommodation providers um, when this thing, because we heard about this thing, Che, it was on the, on the 23rd of November when NSFAS uh, announced to us in the committee uh, and they did say that they were busy with uh, engagements with, uh, with different stakeholders. They'd met some, they were meeting others the following day, which was on a... On a on a, on a Thursday in Johannesburg, I think one of the Masaus on the 24th of November, uh, 2022. So just wanted to check the number of meetings they had and what would have been concerns that were raised at the time um, in preparation for the 2023 uh, meeting. Um, uh, and I'm not asking this because I believe that the cap is not right. I must, I must, I must, Put it categorically that uh, I believe the cap is right because, uh, honestly speaking, student accommodation can range from twenty-eight thousand to ninety thousand. Dinali into student accommodation, but um, honestly speaking, so uh, uh, you know, I, I yeah, maybe let me let me end there, chair, because um, I don't want to speak. I think I've labored that point enough. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Honorable Lithier. Honorable Boshoff. Honorable Mike, sorry, Honorable Boshoff, apologies. Honorable Mikesi had her hand up, but I think she, maybe she got kicked out off the platform and then her hand went down. Honorable Machesi, would you like, would you still like to come in? Okay. I think she's fine. So I'll go to Honorable Boshoff. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, yes, I, I also would like to respond on this old question. Um, I'm not a market fundamentalist, but sometimes it's quite useful to uh, look at the analysis of market fundamentalists because it gives some uh, value. And the whole idea of um, distortion of the market by injecting a huge amount from the state side is what I think um, we have to do with here. 
because um, I think it's quite credible to say that uh, service providers who receive their money from the state through NISFAS, um, they raise the prices and then they rely on students to uh, protest because if you are uh, qualified for NISFAS, then clearly you don't have the money to pay uh, these huge extra amounts for, um, for, for, for accommodation because if you could have paid that, then you wouldn't have qualified for NISFAS in the first place. So um, they raise the prices uh, uh, unfairly or uh, they exaggerate the prices. The students uh, protest and then they get what they want. So it's clearly not a solution to say whatever the market price for um, accommodation is should be paid by NISFAS because then it will inflate indefinitely. Uh, so it's necessary to have a, a cap and to stick to that cap and that uh, service providers should learn that if they can't uh, deliver within that cap, uh, given uh, that the cap is calculated in a, in a, uh, you know, in a, in a uh, fair way, um, uh, that we don't work with a cap of five years ago and say it should still be the same. But I don't think that's where we are. And... Um, that uh, uh, the market is already distorted by the injection of uh, this fuss. And if we uh, insist on increasing the, the cap, then the market is distorted uh, even more. Regarding the protests, I must say that the academic tradition that I come from, we don't do protest like this. It's something that students uh, would typically vote for the Freedom Front, just shake their heads about it's if they, whether they can afford or not, cannot afford. It's unbelievable. We regard uh, academic institutions, uh, I don't want to say sacred, because that uh, gives an, a kind of a religious uh, aid to it, and, and that's what, what I would like to do. But um, it's uh, the, the whole idea of, yes, protest is fine, it just must not become uh, violent. I think it's a, it's a cultural difference, uh, which, which I still uh, find hard to, to breach. Um, but that is just in my own perception, and that doesn't have meaning for anybody else. It's, it's uh, just mentioning that. But what I you, also want to say... Sorry, um, Yes, Honorable Mokhale. No, Mala, I take exception to what this... Uh, this man is saying yeah. he can't say it's a cultural difference. What, what, what is he trying to say? Is he saying it's a black thing? Is he I saying protest? Why people don't protest? They were banning uh, government property there in Senegal. Your white people they were banning stuff there in Senegal. There. What is he trying to say, uh, uh, Chairperson? All right. That that I don't know if it's a point of order or. But Honorable Boshoff and Honorable Mohale, maybe what I should, the sound that's coming out, okay, I think it's from that other mic. Honorable Boshoff, maybe you, 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 you should uh, ex ex explain to Honorable Mohale what perhaps you mean by that, um, so that we ensure that uh, we, are not, we, we are not offending members on the platform. And I see Honorable Zondo has also uh, put his hand up again. And um, I don't know if Honorable Zondo also wants to perhaps clarify what he meant to say earlier on, because I took exception as well to what he was insinuating. Um, Honorable Poshov? Yeah, it's not a racial thing. I'm talking about an, a, a, an academic culture. Um, and it's, it's nothing about race. It's the way in which uh, the academic project is approached. Um, but what I actually want to say is that uh, I, I don't think that we could really proceed indefinitely by saying that um, higher education can be free altogether. I understand that while studying, one doesn't have the means to pay at that stage and one comes from a background where you don't have parents or family or uh, banks who wants to, to uh, want to sponsor you or give you loans or whatever. But I, I repeat what we have said uh, before, 
that once a student is registered for NISPAS, that student should also uh, come on the on the uh, database of, of uh, SARS as a uh, for the uh, pay as you earn system, and when that person starts uh, earning, should re repay at least a portion. Um, and uh, on a on a sliding scale for the interest rate of the loan which has uh, been granted, because that would replenish the fund which will be um, available to be uh, linked to future students, because we are always going to have more students. Um, and while well, in that sense, I think the expectation that uh, 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 studying can be funded, fully funded, uh, even when two years have to be um, uh, repeated or uh, carried over. Um, and there's no uh, um, compulsion to pay back in any way. I, I don't think it's, it's feasible in the long term. But coming back to the culture, I think maybe uh, yourself, and I don't know what Honorable Zondu wanted to say, and Honorable Mukhali, maybe uh, you misunderstood me. Um, there are different academic cultures all over the world. And I was referring to um, the, 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 the way in which I studied about 30 years ago, where something like, uh, you know, um, running uh, in the streets and uh, even becoming violent uh, that was not something which was on. It's a kind of an academic culture, which I uh, don't think has anything to do with race. Thank you. Um, thank you, Honorable Boshoff. Honorable Zondo, I see your hand has come up again. Thanks, Chair. Um, <clears throat> maybe firstly, uh, I raise my hand. When when you're talking and and, and uh, let's see uh, come again on the same issues that I raised. Firstly, <clears throat> maybe if I had in the manner that you said, chair, I withdraw that um, so that I I, I I won't be seen as uh, as uh, I didn't mean to attack any members of the committee in that, but it was just a caution that. Uh, in some other universities or institutions, uh, you find that management uh, use uh, do as they like because they they know that they are connected or they, they uh, But it was not meant that there are instances whereby uh, you uh, chair and the committee uh, did things that favor some of the institutions or many a part of the management because they are comrades um, I, that, I just wanted to withdraw that and the second thing <clears throat> i think because we are using the language that is not our home language uh, but w when i was saying uh, i think we need to meet, try a mediating factor in trying to resolve uh, these issues um, because they were they are raised in many instances, uh, so <clears throat> I hear that let's say that, that I'm saying that whenever it's seventy thousand or eighty thousand, then we, the endless should pay that. But I think as the department, we <clears throat> as the committee, we should try and get some regulation or enforce some regulation that will regulate uh, the approval of the student residents. Uh, and it's kept, you know, so that as Lizzie was saying that you find that a small room uh, costs 6,000 for, for one person and you find that they're sharing and both uh, students are, co are paying 6,000, 6,000. That, that means uh, that small room, now the owner gets 12,000 of that room. So I think uh, some regulations will help to pass, uh, I I know I have knowledge that uh, residents get approval from the institutions. Where well, as far as there's this, there's that thing that uh, institution have had to approve the residents that 
this residence is in a condition that is acceptable uh, to NSFAS and the institutions. I think it has to cover the part of the uh, money to be paid by student that if the size of the residence is like this, then uh, the price should not exceed this or, or be less than this, so that we will be able to keep this uh, under control. Because yes, indeed, we cannot pay whatever man that the, the owners of the residence ask, but we need to try and mediate and come up with solutions and try to enforce that they don't collude with uh, management. Because it, it is said, it is uh, alleged that there are collusion. They are, they are collecting in terms of the price and their man, their monies that are paid to some management staff uh, in order to approve the residents to be what it is and to 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 approve that uh, student pay that that money and they have the percentage in that allowance. So I wanted to put that into context here and withdrawing any uh, statement that it may be. Uh, I may be out of line with uh, trying to uh, maybe to attack. No, I mean, that is, was not the intention, but I was trying to say that we should work together and make sure that we avoid to be uh, misused uh, 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 by anyhow by the, the institutions in abusing uh, <clears throat> students in their institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Zonda. Um, I see Honorable um, Litia, you've lowered your hand. I hope you're fine. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Members, for your uh, comments by and large, because I think, I think maybe Honorable Mananiso is the one who had one question. Um, from my side, I, I really need uh, Sals to send something in writing um, by, by the end of today. Uh, preferably, um, because you see, our concerns are we we want to have a proper um, account by students on what the issues are, so that when we are trying to raise these concerns on behalf of students with man with management and with the department tomorrow. Um, then we, you know, we 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 are able to 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 bridge those gaps a bit better. Um, colleagues would be aware that we are an oversight structure, and so when we see students protest, we will be concerned. And Honorable Mukhali, you're correct; it 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 is concerning. And and I want to highlight Capricorn in particular. Now I'm even told Etlan Zain is also not Etlan Zain. Ete institutions that we we visited. Now when you when you, when I when I for example look into Capricorn, we did not, to be honest, Didi Jizungu, I don't, Didi Jizungu might not be on the platform anymore, but I think uh, Mr. Sonti is on the platform. We, we, we were surprised, I am surprised that, um, that, that, that Capricorn is protesting, uh, particularly the Sishoho campus and to the extent of which it's protesting at. And we, 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 uh, the, the, the spreadsheet here by Safetza, does not necessarily unpack what is the cause of the and, and the incidents to be reported. You don't really unpack on what is the cause of the protests at Sesho, but do explain that teaching and learning is continuing, um, but with poor attendance. Um, so, so, but you know, I think we'll have to enrich the reasons. I mean, of course, there is what the media has has articulated, but for us, it it really will aid us, uh, uh, SG. Um, for us to have the actual reasoning um, in, in, in order for us to be able to hold the department to account in what interventions are being put in place, right? So, so I, am, I am shook, Honorable Mokhale, that um, Capricorn is, is protesting. Um, now, also, Eteguini, I mean, Eteguini, we, we did get a sense of disjuncture between stakeholders. So um, they... Uh, you know, we, we we were concerned and there was a recommendation made by the committee to say, can you please meet our stakeholders and, 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 and be able to find one another as you attempt to successfully start the academic year 2023. Um, the, I don't see... Um, 
I don't see Umfolozi on the spreadsheet of Sadfeta uh, unless Mr. Sonti, my information is, is incorrect in terms of um, Umfolozi protesting, but I thought there was some sort of unrest there at the beginning of the year. If I can just check my notes here. Yeah. Uh, Essi Kaleni, um, which I believe is a campus of Umfolos, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I stand to be corrected by colleagues, but um, our understanding there is that there was also a protest there. So we'd also want to know what is the current state of protest there um, from a student perspective, so that um, we're able to cross-reference that information with what the department will share with us. Um, so yes, Honorable Mohale, it does become concerning that there's a disjuncture between what we witness and what then later happens. But in some cases, there has been, it, not that it makes sense, but there, there were concerns. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, Honorable, chosen. Yes, Honorable Zondo. Yeah, I, I wanted to assure you that it's it's a Escalini, it's a, it's, it's a Skawini college, and uh, yeah, there was a strike, a heavy strike during the uh, the, the beginning of the year. I think it's it's February. So it is Escalini, right? It's yeah yeah yeah. I don't know why they changed the name to Escalini, but it it's a it's an it's a maiden name Escalini, but the college is Ka, it is as Kawini as as for now. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought we knew it as where we went and visited during our oversight. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable Zon. Um, so, so we went to Umfolozi and we did see honorable members at this juncture between the stakeholders there. Um, and, and so I don't want to use the, and, and there was a concern raised at that time um, around water provision um, and this is where we felt it was important for us to ensure that there is representation from um, provincial legislature or even um, local government. And I think Honorable Zondo, in fact, there was a colleague um, uh, uh, that was with us as per your invite during the, the, um, the oversight from the from council, right? So that was all in an attempt to be able to bridge uh, the gap between services that are, are, are not necessarily managed or administered by DHEAD, but have a direct consequence on um, the PSET system. And so um, in other cases, we are surprised, uh, or rather we did not expect these protests, but in other cases, um, we, 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 we recommended that stakeholders work together. We recommended that there must be intervention from uh, local council or from provincial um, government in order for us to overcome some of these challenges and trying to ensure a more successful start to the academic year 2023. Um, a lot of what members are speaking to in relation to the relationship between students and management goes back to a conversation that the committee had last year around institutional autonomy and its relationship with cooperative governance. The fact that university management seems to not appreciate the voice of students, the voice of workers, the voice of the committee, the voice of government, you know, the voice of the communities that they exist uh, within. Um, in appreciating the fact that they are uh, public institutions and therefore, no matter how, you know, others may want to argue uh, that uh, we don't get enough money from government. Um, so, um, you know, we can't be told. But um, I, even if we were giving one cent um, and, and, and we're not giving one cent to the system, but even if we were giving one cent, um, they would still remain public institutions and therefore they would have to adhere to cooperative governance. And we, in a, in, a, in a committee meeting, I think the previous year, not 2022, 2021, the end of 2021, we had a meeting with uh, the, uh, with SAPS, with the police, 
um, as well as with um, with 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 CETAs responsible for secure for security, and we raised this concern on protest protocols or protest policy or you know and and there was a great a, quite a massive conversation that we had to say we need to put up systems. Uh, I see. I think um, Dr. Lewin's on the platform. Uh, DDG, Marsha, so Tlik was on the platform. Um, we we've said that we need to put in systems, um, policies, protocols that across the spectrum will guide how we ought to interact with student protest or interact with protest in general on campuses. What is the protest policy? And so that also students understand what, what rules and processes they are meant to follow. So that it's clear that it doesn't depend. Okay, let me monitor. Hi, now I feel like they're irritating me. Hi, now let me bring in police. Or hi, now let me bring in bouncers. And it's not a wishy-washy thing that depends on which VC is there at that point in time and whether or not that VC has the skill to um, negotiate uh, uh, um, conflict or mediate and, and resolve on conflict. It has to be something that is um, s systematized, right? There must be a system that's put in place. So um, we've spoken about this and we, we felt that the, it's the department that must try and influence some sort of protocols that can be followed across the spectrum. Um, on the matter of bouncers, they are, can we please make sure that our devices are muted? On the issue of bouncers, for example, we've been questioning why we're bringing in private security on campus because private security has no appreciation of the institutional culture. Um, you cannot hold them to account. I mean, there have been reports in various campuses that these people don't even have badges on. We all know that even as a country, right, you are well within your rights as a citizen of, the, of this country to ask for the name. And in fact, you'll see the badge. You must be at all times be able to see the badge of a police officer so that if anything were, were to go wrong, you are able to, as a citizen, say, this police officer mishandled me, mistreated me, did not follow due process, whatever it is. So if that is the, that, that is the protocol we follow, Mr. Mukwena, Mr. Mukwena, if you can please make sure your device is muted. So if that is the protocol that we follow on a national level with our colleagues, can SG um, of, of Safeta please make sure Mr. Mukwena switches his device off. If, if, if the device interrupts the meeting again, we will have to remove the device from the platform. So so if that is the type of protocol that is followed on a national level, that ought to also happen, um, well, through the, you know, uh, uh, through, through the police service, that should also be happening <laughs> with an ordinary security on campus. And that, I mean, I don't even wanna say that bouncers should be because, because, because private security shouldn't be, our view is that private security should not have to be on campus unless there's, some immense, uh, 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 I don't know, st state of emergency that 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 our internal security cannot manage, and I often feel that management brings in um, support uh, or security support. So that's what they want to call it. Um, way too early before they've gone through enough. Uh, measures of um, negotiation, of mediation, and that does not help the system, you know. And, and so DDG, so Tlikwa, as we go into tomorrow's conversation, um, together we're hoping Yusuf will avail themselves because we know that we've had to send these invites to the sector uh, quite promptly because of the fact that we are worried as a committee. We've given colleagues space and time to do their work and matters are not being resolved. Yet we were brought into confidence that we should have a much better start to the academic year than we've had in the past. And there was a general feeling in the sector that we are getting somewhere in terms of having a better start to the academic year. But I'm tempted, honorable members, to say we've moved back this year. I really feel that we, 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 and when I try and compare the start of last year and the start of this year, there has been some regress in this year. Um, 
colleagues, we are hoping that uh, NASFAS had, well, yeah, NASFAS had shared with us two weeks ago that they are trying to find a way to alleviate the, the, the pressures that the cap has put um, on, on the system. And I am, I am, I am glad that South is, is very resolute on their position to say, we support the cap. I don't believe we should be having a challenge with universities, honestly. Universities are part of government. They, they, are, they, are, they are part of us. They are within the system. These are public institutions. I don't believe we should be having a challenge of universities that don't want to adhere to the 45,000 rand cap. And it should, and I'm glad that South is resolute on that position, particularly because NASFAS has informed the committee that they did consult with, uh, um, with, with, with USAF on this cap last year. Where perhaps we believe we should be having a challenge is with private accommodation service providers because they are bigger. I'm not sure. Yes, NASFA says that they did consult a particular structure that represents pub, uh, private sector, but I'm not sure to what extent. Uh, what is the you know the reach that NASFAS could have had in terms of private sector? So there, the communication had had to be beefed up. The lobbying has to be beefed up. The consultation has to be beefed up. There needs to be a whole lot more engagement. And what we were told by NASFAS two weeks ago is that they were trying to look into service. We're, we're encouraging service providers who want to adhere to the 45,000 rand cap to come on board to use the NASFAS accommodation portal. Um, and indicate their interest to be able to provide the kind of support that the system needs in terms of student accommodation, particularly for students who are covered by NASFAS. Um, I then want to really appreciate what Honorable Itzier has said in terms of how management, um, it's interesting how lots of cases will be brought to the committee of um, senior, senior managers in universities, um, you know, deputy vice chancellors, vice chancellors, um, various staff, um, lots of cases will be brought to our attention, but the system is never as rapid in dealing with those cases. People go through disciplinary hearings, people go, you know, it just takes forever. There's not enough evidence and a lot happens before um, we are able to take decisive action in terms of consequence management. However, we are very fast to do <laughs> the very same when it comes to, to students who are protesting out of their frustrations. Um, and that for us is a concern because it just does not inspire confidence in terms of a willingness to work with stakeholders and to find one another. Um, South, I, I, I would appreciate, I have listed institutions that we are concerned about and where we would really want the student narrative to come forth. UKZN and the reasons why UKZN um, is protesting clarity on the students there who are arrested and you know that type of information. That's where we now with that's the issues of the students that are suspended. UP, um, Another, another matter that has been concerning me, honorable members, is that just because an institution is no longer protesting does not mean that the issues at the institution have been resolved. And, and, and that's what we must be very wary of, that you know, we must not overlook institutions that they protested, there's no more protest. Because when you look at, for example, um, Safeta's uh, input, when you look at the last column, matter resolved, yes or no, even though they would have shared with us an intervention, but they clearly indicate whether or not that intervention has resulted in a resolve of the issue. And, and, so, and, and that must be acknowledged and appreciated. So, so let us make sure that we do look into institutions like for example, CPUT and UWC, where there was an issue on student accommodation um, there were, it was even said that there are students who are sleeping in halls, there are students, and the, the SRC was, was and, and I think various student formations were attempting to assist those students. Where are we now with that? Um, has there been a, a sustainable intervention put in place? Um, 
yeah, still in Posh, I think there was a similar situation. So Plaiki University, there were also protests there. Um, have they been resolved? Um, has teaching and learning been able to commence successfully? And I think also being able to monitor the numbers, right? So knowing that no, now we are at zero. So at some point there were 500 students who had not registered. Now we have all students registered and teaching and learning has started because our inability to clo close issues, we don't close issues in the sector. And then it, the issues linger. And then we find ourselves with reoccurring protests. Um, and even students who have, you know, when I think of NASPAS, for example, there are so many cases with NASPAS that we were not able to assist students to resolve, right? Um, to the extent of which now students have, have debt. So had we assisted, so, so, so students have debt, yeah. And now they want to, for example, uh, they've applied for NASPAS for this year, but they have debt from the previous year. Now they can't register because of that debt, um, but, but now they do have funding for this year. And, and so this child is in a, in a deadlock. Um, or there can be a case of a student who applied for NASFAS and didn't know that they can actually reapply. And therefore this year they would actually have funding because their appeal was not closed. Um, so, so there's so many issues in the sector that we don't close off. We think that when the noise has died down, then the matter, okay, let's move on to the next one. But these matters either catch up with us as a sector or catch up with the student. And, and, and that's really unfortunate. Unizulu as well. Um, I, I believe there was some some uh, Christ challenge there at some point. Um, if they are no longer protesting, does that guarantee us that the issues there were, were resolved? NMU and the University of Johannesburg as well. These are just but a few that I've noted on my side. There might be others that I've left out, but we would appreciate for, for uh, again, uh, SG, not, I'm not putting pressure on you, but we'd really appreciate by the end of um, today for us to have uh, a bit more information in that regard. But uh, <clears throat> Um, also, the clar clarity from South, you, you say that um, there, there's a figure that you quoted on students that could have been affected by the progression rule. If you can just clarify that figure so that um, we are more precise in our understanding. Um, so I'd like to understand how many campuses are part of KSD um, maybe uh, the department can help here, yeah, but how many campuses are part of KSD? Because, and, uh, because I'm trying to understand in the, in the entire institution, if there are two campuses that uh, it seems there's no teaching and learning according to what, um, according to the, the template that Fatfeta has shared with us, that would be two campuses out of how many campuses? Um, Yeah, I think I'll leave it at that for now, but it would also be important for us to share the presentation of Satfeta with the, with the TVET program or the TVET branch so that um, as colleagues prepare to brief us tomorrow, they at least also have um, the information that students have shared with us as part of the concerns that we have also as a, a committee. But um, I, I'd like to leave it at that and maybe at this point, appreciate the, the, the information that students have shared with us and really express our concerns as a committee um, on these ongoing issues. We, we know that there's the one part that speaks to access where we, are, we, we have been requesting as the committee, the report on the ministerial task team on student funding, um, hoping that the report will give us recommendations um, that can, can look into sustainable funding for the PSET sector to ensure access uh, to teaching and learning for particularly the working class and the missing middle through free education. And so we've been hoping and waiting. Well, we've been waiting for this ministerial task team report. It was scheduled for last year, towards the end of the year. Um, we were told that uh, it has not gone to cap. Well, cabinet has said that there must be further stakeholder engagement on the on the on the on the report. Um, 
we were told that it would be ready for for us in this first term um, because it should it should have gone to cabinet beginning of this year. We've again uh, been requested to move the briefing to the second term as uh, it is, 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 it hasn't gone to cabinet as yet, that that's the information that we have. And so this is a, of great concern to us as a committee because in terms of access to, 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 to teaching and learning, we are really hoping that um, this report will come up, come out with uh, recommendations that can speak to increasing the cap um, of 350, a thousand rands per, per household to, 450 to 500 to 600, as South has, uh, you know, demanded um, over the years to say, in fact, the cap should be 600,000 rand per household and not um, and not uh, 350. But what is the plan towards that? And that is what we are hoping the ministerial task team um, on student funding report can speak to. Um, but there's also the elements of, of infrastructure. And they on infrastructure, you know, ensuring that we have enough lecture halls, ensuring that we have enough workshops for TV colleges, working towards, and, and here we're not speaking about the CET program, but the CET program, which we are hoping should there should be articulation into the TVET program or even into the university program by that particular student. And if we want that particular uh, uh, articulation from the CET to the TVET or to the university, we need to ensure that the system is able to capture those young people. Um, when we look at the amount of applications to the TVET program and the spaces in the TVET program, there's clearly a need for greater resource. And I don't know in terms of you know, what the ministerial task team was looking at because student funding is one element, but funding the sector is a whole other conversation because funding the sector says, once the student has, once we have ensured that the student has funding, they must have a bed, they must be able to go into a workshop that has enough capacity, they must be able to be taught by lecture enough, there must be sufficient lecturers for the sector. So we need to look at a holistic sustainable funding for the sector, and hopefully the, 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 the report can also speak to that. But in the meantime, the committee has even said, look, public works, how many buildings do you have that are, are, are not utilized, that are close to our institutions that can alleviate this pressure? Um, because that is also part of ensuring access um, to, to the sector. But so we are aware of those um, uh, president or SG, I'm not sure who's excusing themselves. We are, we're going to hand over to you now to make your closing remarks. So sorry, I'm, I'm wrapping up, but we are aware of those overarching um, sectoral issues, but there are also these issues that are campus-based. There are issues that just speak to NASFAS being able to run its administration successfully now. Yes, we have the three, we are on the 350, and on the 350, we must be able to efficiently administer NASFAS. Right. So with the current cohort that we are able to cover, NASFAS must be able to efficiently admin, administer itself. So appeals must be done efficiently. Um, allocations must be done efficiently. But that also speaks to management of these institutions. They must send the registration data on time so that allowances can be sent on time. You know, it speaks to DBE. DBE must resolve its uh, must must release its results on time, so that so it speaks to co better coordination and administration and management within the entire education system. In fact, and and those are the those are the those are the. And I mean, when when the president of of Safeta says, the misinterpretation of guidelines, those are those are matters that shouldn't be there. Right, those are matters that we should be able to address, and that is what we are hoping in the in in the immediate we can be able to give recommendations on um, as we work on in, uh, uh, um, as we work on addressing the bigger uh, sectoral issues that speak to policy and budget and so forth. Um, let me hand over then to um, the colleagues from South. Well, perhaps um, 
let me check from the department before I hand over to South and Safeta because this is a meeting between South Safeta and ourselves. But let me hand over to the department if there are any DDGs or colleagues from the various branches who would like to say a thing or two, noting that of course, um, tomorrow we will be having a, a more in-depth meeting with, with yourselves. But can I check if there's any colleagues who would like to say anything? Dirichi Sotikwa, Dr. Lewin, um, Sonti, any, any remarks, colleagues? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, we will provide a detailed submission tomorrow. Um, I think uh, we've heard uh, the different views um, from uh, the student representatives. We've heard uh, views from uh, members, the honorable members in the room, um, and we'll provide a detailed um, submission uh, in our presentation tomorrow. Thank you, Chair. Uh, but we, we really do appreciate um, that we're invited to, to this meeting and that we were able to um, uh, hear um, what, this, what the students are saying too. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Dichi Sotikwa. Um, Mr. Sonti? Yes. Thank you so much, Chair. Also, Chair, we will present tomorrow. However, Chair, I think it's important that we must highlight that we are working very closely with Saveza and our SRCs to try and resolve some of the issues that we have. Uh, also, Chair, to just to respond to one of the questions that you raised regarding Iskawin, we can safely say there's no longer protected a matter of water was resolved, Chair. The municipality was the one that was having water shortages. So now, extra water tankers were then procured by the college and the municipality is even going as far as to try and assist with the boreholes to resolve the issue of that campus permanently check. Uh, with regards to Sesheho, for instance, as we speak now, the college management is currently busy with the SRCs in a meeting, but the issue there is also around allowances, the allowances from the last semester that were not paid and they saying it's outstanding allowances but we'll also get a report from them in terms of how that meeting ends but we are working very close with Saveza in, in all these matters that they have raised thanks so much thank you very much uh, mr sonti thank you very much didit you so and mr sonti we will um await a, a full-on briefing by yourselves together with nasfus uh, Yusuf and Sabko um, in, in, in tomorrow's meeting. Um, I'd like to then hand over to uh, colleagues from South for any closing remarks from yourselves, and then I'll hand over to colleagues from Safetza. South? No, thanks, uh, Chair. I think, firstly, let's uh, appreciate. Uh, the opportunity uh, that you have given us. Uh, we really want to commend uh, the work that uh, the portfolio committee is doing because every time when there are issues, you don't wait up until the last minute, but uh, even if it's in a very short period of time, but you call us and hear from us in terms of what is happening within the sector. We, we really appreciate that. To us, it means a lot that uh, as the portfolio committee indeed, uh, you have, you know, what it takes for that portfolio committee to try to resolve the issues uh, that are faced by the sector. But maybe as I do my closing remarks, Chair, on a very high level, it's in some of the questions that were, uh, that were asked uh, by the honorable members. Uh, uh, Chair, I must say that around the issue of the consultation, particularly, on the issue of uh, of the accommodation cap, as Honourable C has asked, uh, to be honest, in the in the in the engagement that we had with Yusuf, even though the VCs were not blunt in saying that uh, they were rejecting, but the concerns that they were raising, of course, the concerns that at the very same time they were not able to articulate, because what we wanted to uh, uh, understand it's exactly uh, the example that uh, Honorable Litsia has given about 
the city of Cape Town that how do we justify uh, this variation of cost in the institutions where they exist in one city? So what is the justification of this? And we gave them a number of examples. Uh, 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 but the only silly answer that we could get was the issue of the cost of property and whatnot. Uh, some of us are not uh, in the property space, so we were not really you know, uh, 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 interested in that discussion because I think what we were raising at the very basic level was to understand what makes the cost to be, to be too different. Uh, you know, uh, 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 in institutions where they exist in one city. But also, I think uh, I want to agree with the portfolio committee chair uh, that uh, uh, university officials, particularly senior officials, who are abusing their power uh, must be condemned in the very strongest terms. Uh, uh, because what they do is not, they don't want to be held accountable. Uh, when student leaders, uh, are trying to hold them accountable. They use their powers in terms of, you know, uh, 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 frustrating them, and 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 doing all these funny things. I'm saying I want to agree with the with, with the colleagues uh, from the portfolio committee that indeed, uh, if we can have your support on this one, not only your support. Here we also need the voice of the department because that department must be take a leadership role when it comes to coordinating the sector, particularly on these matters. Because when students are raising these issues, they are not sleeping and then waking up, they decide that they are challenged. No, and these issues that some of them were raised even before at the end of the, of the year, that look, one, two, three, and four might be a problem. Let's start negotiating through the registration committees which were, uh, which were established. But what institutions are doing, they tend not to take those registration committees serious. And then, Come January, they want to be arrogant and they want to implement things that are going to disadvantage uh, students. And lastly, Chair, uh, maybe uh, 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 before I close, uh, on the issue of the union, I would implore if the, the portfolio committee uh, can really have a word uh, uh, with Nehau. Uh, uh, Nehau, the struggle of the workers uh, are, are intertwined with the struggle uh, of students. but. Uh, I want to agree with Honorable Fitz here. It can be then done in a way that, you know, is going to disadvantage uh, the other. And not to say the concerns that are being raised are not genuine. I fully agree with that. But there ought to be a conversation so that we, we, we try to align ourselves so that if they need a support, for instance, by the time they go for the wage negotiations in terms of when they deadlock, they say, we need the support in these particular instances. These are our issues. And then that should be the conversation. But now to want to have a strike around January, it really defeats the purpose and it causes the very unnecessary chaos. But the last one, Chair, on the progression rule, the number of the affected students. This is the rough number that we have given you, Chair, based on the, based on the, you know, when we when 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 this thing came up, we said to SRC, Based on the students that are affected, they must give us rough estimates around this. And then NASA is trying to give us, is trying to finalize a list. That's what we have requested from them yesterday to say we want, you know, we want a, 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 a figure that we know that this is this is the number of the students that have been uh, that have been affected by this progression rule. Uh, because as far as we're concerned, this should be resolved before the end of this week for everyone that has been affected by this uh, 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 before Friday. They should be resolved and they should be, they, they should be able to be back on the, uh, on, on the funded list uh, as far as the, the NASFAS uh, is concerned. Uh, so I'm not sure, Chair, but I think I would like to thank you once again. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to the SG of South together with the team. Um, once SG has spoken, I don't think SG or president has spoken. I don't think anyone else usually comes in. So I'm really hoping that, uh, that all colleagues from South have been covered. Uh, if not, I, I hope that you will be able to uh, strengthen the document that the committee expects to receive um, by the end of today. Thank you so much to colleagues from South. Um, 
colleagues from Sarfetsa, Nopala. Uh, thanks, thanks, Chair, uh, for the opportunity and the invite to this committee. We really appreciate it. Uh, I just want to clarify one thing, Chair, uh, on the report. Uh, Mandeni campus is under Umfolo Zitivity College. However, we have also in, we have also received an invite uh, from the office of the principal at, at Umfolozi uh, to join them on the meeting today with the SRC members and try to solve issues on the strikes that are at Mandeni campus. Thanks to Mr. Sonti for clarifying the issue of Eskawini. Uh, we are really working close with the regional office and the D, the DHT branch to try to resolve all these issues. We will continue to work hand in hand with them. Uh, we know that we are still new at the office, but they are making our work very easy um, with the assistance. Thanks a lot, Chair. Thank you very much, um, Nopala. Colleagues, you know, what, 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 what my concern becomes, right, is that all the work that we are doing at a national level, so the work we do as the committee with the department and the various stakeholders, the work that um, Sal Safeta does with the department, the work NASFAS in the department does, the meetings USAF has with the department, the meetings that SAPCO has with the department and the students. And so whatever we are doing at a national level, is good, right? But my biggest concern is always the translation of our work to the realities on the ground. Um, and and, and a, a clear example of this is NASFAS. You know, we, we, when you are dealing with the cases that are coming in from students um, as, a, as, a, as a member, you will be so frustrated. Um, and then you'll go to NASFAS and you'll ask questions and you, and you say, oh, okay, I, I think I hear you. I think I hear you. Now, I always say that NASFAS therefore needs to strengthen its communication to citizens. We need to get to a point where ordinary citizens, not even students, ordinary citizens understand what NASFAS is doing, right? And, and so, and that for me speaks to the issue of the translation of our work, the translation of our, of our high level stakeholder relations, the meetings that we have, uh, the recommendations that we make, um, the translation of that to the experience of the student on the ground, to the experience of the worker on the ground, to the experience of the sector. It, it, it just, it becomes so frustrating, you know? Um, and, and so, I think that's perhaps a question that one wants to leave with everyone uh, this often, well, this morning as, as you know, as we go into tomorrow's meeting is that all this work that we continuously do, this coordination that, you know, uh, Nopala um, Mkwali is, 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 is expressing here, um, the, the, the engagements that South was expressing, the many meetings we've been having, um, and the translation of that to the lived reality on the ground. Something has got to give, you know. Honorable uh, Yabo is not in the meeting today. He's with basic education. He's with the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education. But he always, he always emphasizes the fact that it's really unfortunate that we are not the people in the NASFAS offices who, 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 who must process you know, uh, that communique that will say the student must, um, uh, is missing supporting documents. You know, we are not the, the, the individual in the registration office of, of, of whatever institution that is not sending the data to NASFAS. We, we are not those people. Um, and so how do we translate the urgency that we want to the people who are working in the offices? Because that's also, part of it, right? And that's where we really want to see principles and values of Batupili come forth, where, the, where, where, where officials and you know, where, where, where public servants, administrators, um, you know, also contribute to this work that we are doing, where we all contribute to this work that we are doing in wanting to see young people in this country or citizens of this country have uh, access 
to our institutions and are successful in our institutions in ensuring that they have the requisite skills and knowledge to be active participants of our economy um, and ensuring that we can better their livelihoods and contribute to the self-liberation of our people. So that's the question, colleagues, the impact of the conversations that we're having, the impact of the recommendations that we're making. Um, thank you very much to all colleagues uh, from SAUS and SAFETSA. Again, wishing the leadership of uh, SAFETSA all the best with their term and congratulating them, of course. And we look forward to working with you. Um, to honorable members, we'll see each other tomorrow. Um, we, we will be getting a briefing from the department um, as a continuation from this meeting, but also for them to share with us um, what they've done. And we're hoping that the department will be able to ensure that the various stakeholders are present. So, uh, um, USAF, uh, SABCO, um, we've also sent letters to them as the committee, but it would really be uh, great if the department can also ensure that they are there. NASFAS. We were doing so well. There was going to be no need for us to remove you from the platform, please. Um, so if you can assist in ensuring that those stakeholders are there, because we don't want to be pa speaking past one another, honestly, colleagues. Um, so yeah, so that will be us tomorrow, honorable members and colleagues. And thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, this meeting has come to an end. Thank you.